Jazz Minas. We are live, local and loud, and uh, what it means is we've got the best and uh, the greatest selection of local music talent uh, that you'll find on the Leicester music scene. And uh, as always, my uh, co-presenter Kevin Gorn has joined me today. Hello, Kevin. Hello there, Jazz. Hi, Kevin. Well, let's dive straight in. Kevin, tell us some of the great acts that we've got on the show today. OK, well, as usual, Jazz, we've got an eclectic mix of uh, musicians. Um, first of all, we'll be starting off with Foul Body Autopsy, um, which is an interesting band. We shall tell you all about why he's quite interesting and quite unique, actually. Um, he plays, or they play, death metal so that'll be nice to wake everybody up with a bit of death metal um so we should be talking to them and also talking about next week's uprising festival as well metal festival uh which will be at the o2 academy building so it'd be nice to find out a bit about that um and then we've also got the young and extremely talented ro jordan um she'll be talking to us about her latest music and doing a live performance for us and she'll also be telling us about her recent gig at Gigs in the Gardens at DMH, which was a couple of weeks ago. Fantastic. So that will be great. And she's a singer-songwriter extraordinaire. And also we'll be having Harry Giorgio um, on the show. He's a singer-producer. Um, he also performed at the um, Gigs in the Gardens a couple of weeks ago at DMH. So it would be great to talk to, to talk to him about his producing and his singing. And I believe we'll be hearing some of his tracks as well. So it would be great to have a chat about him. He's also um, linked in with a, a local studio that do a load of stuff as well. So it would be nice to hear about them as well. So that's about the size of it, Jazz. What do you think about that? Sounds pretty good to me, Kevin, as always. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, let's go. Our first artist is uh, waiting in the wings. Here's a track from him, and uh, this is uh, um, his musical name, which is Foul Body Autopsy. Oh, 
that is full body autopsy and it is literally a one-man band and uh, he goes by the name of Tom. Hello Tom and welcome to uh, Live Local and Loud. Hi, how are you doing? Very well and uh, Tom, you know, thanks for coming in. Um, I know that uh, weekends and so on are very uh, busy times you know, for performances and so on. Um, tell us about the name of the band, uh, Tom. I'm really interested. Full body autopsy. Nothing, you're not a, a doctor or anything like that? No, no. It, um, I was a while ago. I was trying to, because I started the project when I was 17 and was trying to come up with a, a name. And um, one of my favourite bands is called Necrophagist. And they had a song called Foul Body Autopsy. Yeah. And it was just like, that's perfect. Because I couldn't come up with anything that sounded um, right, or at least right to me at the time. I mean, it's a slightly embarrassing name now. At like 27, it's a bit like, ugh. But, um, yeah, it just came through from listening to um, other bands, and I just went, I'll have that. Yeah. So, Tom, you're a one-man band. I mean, first of all, your style of music, how would you broadly describe it? Um, it kind of gets thrown in the death metal category, but I tend to call it, like, melodic death metal now because it's... it's for, for a layman, it's obviously, like, um, really kind of overly heavy and a bit unpleasant most of the time for most people. Um, but f in our genre, it's actually quite poppy now, which uh, yeah. is sort of the direction I'm going in. It's more sort of... I would never describe any music as unpleasant, Tom. It's, I would just say it's taste-driven. You've Every never heard... It has an audience and a taste, and different people have different tastes, so yeah. um, I do thank you, you know, for uh, uh, your openness. Um I would normally say, who are the members of the band, Tom? But there ain't. There's you. So how does that work? You know, how can you be a band on your own? Um, with a lot of technology. Yeah. Um, but it's, there's plenty of bands in the '80s that were playing with like two members and just using a lot of drum machines. Um, OMD are a good example of that. Yeah. Um, but it's um, it's just a drum machine um, and then a few extra bits in the backing track for, for live and you just sort of build it up as you would if you were playing with other musicians, but um, you just do it all yourself. And who's influenced your music, Tom? Uh, are there any big sort of uh, names that come to mind in terms of, uh, you know, uh, where you are now? And There's sort of, the, the, you know, the standards like, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Napalm Death, um, all of the deaths. Um but it's just any of the sort of the bigger metal bands that you'll you'll hear. Um, I typically, I'll, I'll listen to them. But I listen to a lot of stuff though. It's like I'll, I've recently I've been listening to a lot of jazz, so I've been listening to a lot of Django Reinhardt. That's interesting, yeah. So you know, there's a lot of time I don't really necessarily want to be getting my ears blasted by metal all the time. I, I tend to enjoy a lot of ambient stuff as well, so I'm just sort of sit and zone out. So I'm going to hear another one of your songs, cool. and then I'll kind of get you to uh, back announce it and maybe tell us a little bit about um, if there's a meaning to the song. Yeah, sure. Yeah.
Live, local and loud here on Radio Fox, and uh, we are talking right now to our uh, very special guest, Tom, who uh, stage name is Full Body Autopsy. Tom, we just heard a, a, the second track from you there. Can you uh, uh, tell us the title and a little bit about what the song is about? Uh, that's Consumed by Decay, and it's the first song off the new um, the new record, and it's a concept album um, based around the last album. Um, which the idea was to do a sort of a um, Walking Dead kind of um, zombie apocalypse kind of vibe for the concept, and it's sort of the the album before was kind of an overall what happened in the world, and then I thought it needed to be more personal for the next one. So it's kind of a personal story of a a, a man or woman who's trying to get their way from a very unsafe part of the world that they're in to where they will be safe. So it's more of a, a journey of just trying to get away from. Um, strife, I suppose. So, in terms of um, music, um, is it all your own creation, or do you do covers or a bit of both? Uh, no, it's all my all my creation. I'm not very good at learning other people's songs. <laughs> Tell us about where people can come and uh, see you performing. You know, you sort of uh, into local venues, into festivals, uh, a bit of both. Uh, if uh, I tend to play all over the place, um, but if I'm playing anywhere, it'll either be Firebug. I'm playing Uprising Festival uh, next week at the um, O2. Um, what time? What time and day will you be playing, Tom? Saturday at... So I think doors open around 2 and I'm on first, so I'm not 100% sure what time I'm on, but I know doors open at 2 and I'm so on first on the second two, stage. 2.30ish. Yeah. Uh, tell us about Uprising. Uh, Uprising, it's a festival that happens every year, and this is the fourth one. Um, it's three days. It's a three-day metal festival, but it's um, the Friday's uh, Firebug, and it's kind of a shorter bill, so it's basically get done at work, go to the go to Firebug, um, have something to eat, watch a load of bands. The next day is at the um, the O2, and then the last day will be at Firebook again. And it's the, it's the those days are kind of two full days, right. and, uh, and this year you've got the biggest lineup mm. there's been. Um, Napalm Death headlining, aren't they? Yeah, you've got the, the inventors of grindcore uh, headlining um, Saturday. You've got Memorium, which is um, members of Bolt Thrower, um, oh. Acid Rain. Yeah, um, Acid Rain is the lineup. If you look at Seven Hells from Leicester. Yeah. Yeah. Um, resin is, it, from Leicester. Yes, that's true. They're on about three three thirty. I happen to remember, aren't they, on the Saturday? Yeah. And because it's, it's all over the O2 as well, isn't it? In all the venues. Yeah, yeah. So from, all I think there's about four venues there, ranging from massive to medium to tiny. So that'd be really good. Yeah, so yeah. can't wait for that. Metal is there metal, and that's it, or is there like categories of metal? There's the the subgenre family tree goes on forever. <laughs> like somebody somebody actually did it once, and it just it just went on and on and on and on. It was and, two or three, but then one and on and on. You've got grindcore. That's one. Um, melodic death metal. That's two. And then you've got like symphonic, um, like well, like symphonic. Symphonic metal, that's another one. So you've it's got, it, you've got maths metal or something. Oh, you? yeah, math metal, which yeah, is math. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could be have, have you got garage metal? Not yet. I just call it rock. I mean, pretty much everything next weekend will be rock, really, won't it? Yeah, yeah. If it's, it's got one loud. Stream of rock to another. Stream. It's got loud guitars. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, how well travelled are you? Are you sort of mainly a Leicester performer, or have you sort of gone further afield? Uh, no, I've gone all over the UK. So, I've been, done, you know, from Glasgow to Southampton. So it's, I've done all over the shop and kind of everywhere in the middle as well. Coming back to um, the, uh, the gig that's coming up, um, who are some of the other big Leicester uh, metal bands that are going to be there? Uh, from what I remember of seeing the bill, um, you know, though you have Resin, who are um, quite a big um, quite a big local band, but they're more from Hinkley, I suppose, but um, they're big locally. Uh, just have a look in the lineup. Oh, you've got Seven Hells, um, who won Metal to the Masses last year, which is a competition that will get you to play Bloodstock Festival, which is about 14,000 people in a field in Derby. Um, myself, and then... So, Tom, I think just before you came on air, uh, in our pre chat you mentioned that you've been uh, performing for about 10 years. Does that kind of mean that you've reached where you want to be, or are you still going somewhere? Uh, I think you're always still going somewhere. I think if you wake up one day and you're satisfied with where you are, you've lost the battle, really. Do you know where you're going? No idea. But you'll find out when you get there, probably. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those I'm just going to keep ploughing through <laughs> until it. I sort of get to where I need to be. Excellent. Talking about going, Tom, we're not trying to get rid of you, unfortunately. Mm. We've run out of time, yeah. 
Uh, it's been great having you in, and we, we always love to you know cover all the different types of music that people can enjoy in Leicester. Um, just finally, finally, you know, in terms of uh, new music, have you got anything in the pipeline, or are you majoring on actually just performing now? Um, at the minute, Uprising will be the last thing that I do um, this year, and then um, it's going to be working on the next album, um, most of next year, and then I'll be Fantastic. back in 2020. Well, keep in touch and, uh, you know, keep dropping us uh, new music where, where uh, you're happy to share it with us. Um, just before you go, what, where can people get access to your music, your work? Uh, it's all over Spotify, any streaming platform you can find it. Um, Foul Body Autopsy. Yeah. And then Fantastic. just that straight into Spotify and you'll find something. Thank you, Tom. Cool, thank you.
We think too lowly of ourselves Cause of what we're shown Through magazines on shelves And pictures on our phones Making girls feel like they're unwell Unless we see their bones yeah. It's like we're all under a spell Trying to be clones The media controls what is beautiful And everybody wants to sell their souls To feel suitable uh. If we don't look how we're told to We're unusual And if you dare to try and make a bold move You're delusional you're They use celebrities to show us how we must stress yeah. They're good aesthetically But inside they have much stress yeah. Which leads to remedies of alcohol and rough to have serenity, just focus on your looks less Cause I feel like we care way too much about what others think Always comparing stuff makes us think that we're struggling We have to dare to trust to try and find the good in things Rejection's scary but you have to learn to love within Feeling broken But this world won't break me down Cause these tears are only made for mine Pressure is rising Need her all around but you're a king, so don't forget your crown. Be proud that you're unique, cause no one else is you. No. From your frown, your walk, your speech, to the way you move. Yeah. You're probably insecure, that's why you're craving views. You can find value in your flaws any way you choose. Now you're in absurd debt from trying to look perfect. Oh. But what's it worth, considering you're now worth less? Yes. This is for the girls, thinking that they've got the worst chest. Oh. Or all the lads who feel disturbed by their third leg. Yes. Some girls need makeup to give themselves a fake look. Yes. It's time we wake up, we're not living in Facebook. No. We should appreciate how this universe made us. Instead, it seems that we use hate to replace love. I bet they call it Instagram, cause it's like picking up when your picture lands. Then you get your quick fix when the likes go up. Now you're addicted to the cycle, but now you're, now you're, now you're. Feeling broken, but this world won't break me down. Cause these tears are only made for mine. Pressure is rising. But you're a king, so don't forget your crown. Everyone's a slave to profit Some even talk about what others make like it's gossip You need to focus on your aims, not your wallet And demonstrate that we're still the same if we ain't got it Yeah, wrapped up in the illusion that it's imagery We all seek inclusion so we make our lives look glittery But the truth is we're just disguising misery Our time is spent online so we rely on lies and insta feed Feeling broken with this world Cause these tears are only made for mine Pressure is rising Need you all around But you're a king so don't forget your crown that's Comprehend and uh, a former guest on the show. And uh, that's kind of warming you up because um, our next guest is a uh, young lady called Ro Jordan. And she's going to be uh, uh, talking to us. She's going to do a couple of tracks live. So really looking to, uh, forward to talking to Ro. But we're going to start it off with her new song, which is called Speak Up Ladies. Than a little bit of this and that. I seen a love back in my day, I wouldn't take it back. And now I see this one, my different that ends. Just so feeling across the board, we could raise a bit of tension. Yeah, equally allergic. Stand up, boy. Simple for the pie. You call this that boy. Go figure, you say raise a pie. I say raise a figure, ask the question for say who pulled the trigger. Reality, check me. Knowing what will be, will be. Cause I know that will rise in time. Truth is big up, 
That's Speak Up Ladies from our next guest on Live Local and Loud. And uh, we have the pleasure of welcoming Ro Jordan. Hi, Ro. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, good, thanks. And thanks for coming along today, Ro. No worries. Um, Ro, uh, tell us about your style of music, because we've, we've heard a song there. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that track, because I gather it's pretty hot off the presses. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of an old school bebop uh, kind of sound. I, I tend to derive from using hip hop in my songs and my music and composing that. I started off doing R&B and fusing that together with hip hop, but people have said to me that it sounds more commercial to them now, so I've been getting like notations that they're saying, "Oh, this sounds like pop now." So that's cool by me. That's fine. <laughs> more radio friendly. So so you're a soloist, yeah? You, yes. Yeah. And um what tell us about the local hip hop scene. How how kind of um, big is it and you know how vibrant is it I feel like there's more of an uprising coming up for hip hop artists as such such as myself because there's more of a want for 90s throwback music yeah from the people that I've worked with or uh, the places I've gigged at those are the songs that seem to connect the most with people and I just think it's because it's a relatable time that people want to kind of throw back to and you know remember mm. reminisce so um I mean there's quite a lot of hip hop art- uh, hip hop artists out there who are like doing the rapping game and whatnot and it's how they're making it modern now that's making it work on radio as it is today yeah and rather interestingly um yeah. it's it's the time when uh, a band called the Sugar Hill Gang, who yes. you may know of. Yeah. Actually, it was 40 years ago that the Sugar Hill Gang brought out the first uh, major hip-hop track. Is it that long ago? Rapper's Delight. <laughs> and that's mm. the thing that really set off hip-hop music. Yeah. So it's great to have you in today, just to kind of, uh, you know, as part they've of that set, sort of celebration of that. They've set the pa- path for me. They've done that for me. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, who influences you, Music Row? At the moment, I mean, I'm getting a lot of Anderson Park and... Um, I mean, throwback people from the 90s, such as Aaliyah, LL Cool J. I mean, we were talking about it earlier, but, yeah, people like that are very present in my mind because they've heavily influenced my music from a young age. Yeah. So I think growing up, as your music grows with you, it just naturally happens subconsciously, like, with different people you're listening to. I sound like I don't listen to modern music. I tr- trust me, I do. It's just... I have my preferences. <laughs> well, I see the rap kind of element yeah. sort of being a bit more modern. For sure. Like, I never I never considered myself, like, a rapper when I started music, but as soon as I started listening to proper hip-hop and rap, it just naturally kind of came to me, and I found it easier to write raps mm. as well as I did than hooks for singing. So, again, it's one of those things that subconsciously, I didn't know it was going to happen like that, but it's played out But it's nicely. good because it, it spans... Um, Generations, because yeah. that's one thing I always notice about your gigs. I haven't seen your Western Park this year and Ox Jam and all the rest of yeah. that. The audience is full of total different generations. You've got quite older people yeah. like myself and maybe even older, um, and quite young people as well. So, sure. you know, you've got a really wide range. I know we say that about most people, but I think that's particularly the case in your, Cheers, in your thank case. You. That's the thing I struggle with. I think when I go to gigs, I have this preconceived notion that people aren't going to like my music because of their age. Or or right. just the type of genre they're into. I'm like, surely they don't listen to this type of music. But it's not that they do listen to this type of music. It's when you perform it live, doesn't matter. No, exactly. As long as you connect with that person, they don't care whether it's their type of music or not. They're like, hmm, that, that's actually quite cool. I'll, I'll listen to that again. 
don't mind it. So, Rowan, in terms of uh, you do your own stuff and yeah. you do covers, give us a, a couple of names of covers that you do. Um, well, recently I've been working on this cover, which I'm going to do like a live lounge uh, at my studio uh, with his last request by Paolo Nettini. Yeah. And for Christmas last year, I did <laughs> Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, but like a really jazzed up version, like right. the old school version, because I like a lot of jazz as well. Um, so you don't necessarily do covers of hip hip hop classics. You tend to no, do covers of uh, much wider. Yeah, yeah, I started doing like I started off with R and B and jazz music. That's how music came into my life. Listening to a lot of Frank Sinatra or Louis Armstrong or even Amy Winehouse's first album, Frank. That's played a big part in my music um, evolving, I'd say. And I play a lot of. Uh, jazz music on the guitar for sure Ro you're going to perform your first track Life for Us yes and um, it's a track uh, called um, Excuse Me yes it yeah. is that's my uh, single can you tell that a little bit about it March. and then uh, we'll, we'd love to hear it okay well um, this is Excuse Me and yeah it came out in March <laughs> I'll get the guitar now <laughs> fantastic so uh, Rose just uh, getting herself set up for that it's always great when we get to artists performing live on the show and uh, this is Excuse Me Take it away, Ro. Just make sure the mic's right up to my mouth now. <laughs> up and around, I've done a little bit of this and that. I've seen a lot back in my day, I wouldn't take it back. Excuse me, hey, Mr. Business. What's up, this love? Can you feel this? Cause you're the coolest guy I'll run, run, run. Excuse me, I miss the business Like this and just ain't with this Cause he's the flyest guy in town, town, town If you don't wanna talk about it, I don't wanna talk about it You should be alright with that If you don't wanna talk about it, well then okay hey. Cause I could be a little rebel, I could start a fight But when I start a fight, I start a fight, right? If you don't wanna talk about it, well then okay I'm feeling like to my word and change my life, yeah, come on, yeah. you got me feeling like, ooh, you've come into my world, there's no surprise, yeah. uh, he shows up wearing the Gucci, touchdown or say e a Rucci, cause he's the coolest guy around, around, around. Money. Want him to call me his honey Cause he's the flyest guy in town, town, town If you don't wanna talk about it, I don't wanna talk about it You should be alright with that, oh come on If you don't wanna talk about it, well then okay hey. Cause I could be a little rebel, I could start a fight But when I start a fight, I start a fight, right? If you don't wanna talk about it, well then okay I'm feeling like, ooh to my world and change my life. Oh, come on, yeah. You got me feeling like, ooh, ooh, ooh. You've come into my world, there's no surprise. Yeah. Patiently for this one request, so come and talk to me. And we'll sing the rest. Don't hesitate, my babe. I know that love is. Real, so turn it up in here. I'm about to break these heels. If you don't wanna talk about it, I don't wanna talk about it. You should be a rapper, that. If you don't wanna talk about it, well, then okay. Hey, cause I could be a little rebel, I could start a fight, but when I start a fight, I start a fight. Right. No, no, okay, you got me feeling like.
Excellent. Thank you, Ro. And uh, that was, uh, excuse me? Yes. I think I started off singing my other song, to be fair. <laughs> I was like, which one is it? Sounded so good to me, Ro, so thank Cheers. you for that. Uh, Ro, tell us about where you perform on the local scene. Where, where can people find you? Um, well, I've been performing all around Leicester for a good couple of years now. I've performed a few, time in Lo- a few times in London. I mean, recently I did the De Montfort Hall gig, Gigs in the Gardens, which was epic. Mm. Yeah, t- tell us about that, Ro, because I'm um, really intrigued, because the De Montfort have kind of uh, reinvented themselves. Yeah. It used to be Summer Sunday, and then they went into Simon Says, and now they've kind gone into this uh, I think they spent a lot of money on revamping the uh, the outside gardens yeah and they can now hold uh, these sort of bigger events if you like and, yeah definitely uh, yeah so tell us how, how did that come about and how was it for you well the experience for, for me was like no other I think it's because of the quality of everything and they uh, they had everything sorted out for everyone and they catered to different genres of music which was really welcoming and the way it came about was I mean, Dean Jackson, he's been great to me supporting my music. And uh, after doing a live session for him a while ago, he was like, we don't have enough, like, hip-hop artists doing um, on the scene uh, at the moment. So I feel like we need to, you know, get something sorted about that. And he was like, are you up for playing on the 24th? I was like, I think I'm free, but yeah, where? And he was like, oh, De Montfort Hall. I'm like... Huh? You said so, I, need, you sorry, said I need to do big venues, Dean. Well, I, I mean, I've done big venues before. Like, I've done uh, festivals in and around yeah. Leicester, but this was something else for me because, yeah. like, growing up, I've, I've been to De Montfort Hall seeing other people in concert. Yeah. So it was very special for me, and the fact that you even considered me, I'm really grateful for that. And then when I went, I was really nervous, I'm not going to lie. I feel like you were... As a musician, I personally get the nerves mostly when I'm backstage, but as soon as I hit the stage, yeah. as corny as that sounds, like, I'm cool, it's kosher. But, um, yeah, before I was telling Dean, I was like, I'm a bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. Cause yeah, I'm, well, I think the, the yeah. butterflies thing, is, some people find that actually raises their performance. Yeah, I, I definitely think it did because... I've found that performing in small venues as well to smaller audiences, I find that more difficult because I'm literally seeing every one of the people's faces, yeah. which is fine, but it does make you more on edge, I guess. Whereas when I stepped foot onto the De Montfort stage, although I was really nervous beforehand, as soon as I got on stage, it's like, because there were so many people there, it was more just like having a bit of fun. Yeah. Like you can see a few of them, you can yeah. wave. It was a big do... stage and uh, yeah. the sound system was fantastic. Oh, was brilliant. Like... I mean, I didn't even have in-ears, but I didn't have a problem. So that was great. That's yeah. a first. <laughs> fantastic. So, yeah, it's a great nice experience. experience. Yeah. Did, did that stage, though, you say you've played on stages of similar size. Yeah. Is, is that one of the bigger ones or biggest? That's one of the biggest. I did do Abbey Park a couple of years ago now, which was they did this bonfire festival with oh, Gem yeah. 106 Radio, yeah. and they had me on stage for that, and they said there's over 15,000 people there. So I was like, oh, cool. Oh, <laughs> That's great. And there was a lot of people there, and it was kind of the same as De Montfort. I had my face on a big screen in the background, right. but that was the first time two years ago that I'd had that. Yeah. So at De Montfort Hall, I was like... Yeah, I'm okay with seeing my face on a big screen. Yeah, that's totally normal. What's it like having so much space, though, either side? Do you think you've got to f- do you try and walk around and fill I, it? Or? I mean, if you saw it, like, I was trying to make use of the whole space right. I got because I feel like a lot of people, if you're given that sort of space, you make the most of it. Yeah. And as a performer, I wanted to connect with people over that side, in the middle, in the centre, mm. way at the back. I wanted them all to hear me and watch what I was doing. So, yeah, make the most of the stage. And obviously, I didn't have a band. The only reason I didn't want a band, I would have hired one for that type of gig. But I thought, you know, it's my big, my first big gig in a few years. I'd like it to kind of primarily be about me and my yeah. music and the image so they can present and they can, they can sort of so see what's to come. So it was you and your guitar? I, didn't, I had a guitar for one song, Speak Up Ladies. Where right. <laughs> I tried to do the riff on stage, the guitar riff that's in Speak Up Ladies at the very beginning of the track. And I couldn't believe it. I managed to do that live with the pedal and then I put the guitar down and then I started performing. But I was that was what I was most nervous about because I consider guitar for me and piano is more of a songwriting therapeutic thing for me rather than I use it always yeah. for performance. So, so where can uh, people sort of uh, find you performing on the local scene? Um, I've got videos on YouTube of me performing in and around Leicester and I've got... Uh, a gig coming up at Boxed, I believe, on the 14th of September. Yeah, is so, that a new venue? Or yeah, yeah, they're doing, like, a grand opening for that and 
upcoming musicians, so they've asked me to do that for them. Um, so, so where is that venue? It's uh, Bro- uh, Braun- Bronsgate? Bronston Gate, is Bronston it? Bronston Gate, oh, right, yeah. Okay. It's, it's around there too. that it's opening Near up. Near Nobber Road, that sort of Yeah. Oh, right, OK. See, I, d- I sound like I don't know Leicester right. very well. I'm like Bronston Gate. Too funky cafe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I've gigged there before yes. as well, and they talked to me about this one and the concept they had yeah. for it, basically just showcasing new music and musicians. Mm. But, yeah... You can find me on YouTube. I've got my latest music video out as well for Speak Up Ladies, right, which you heard, right. um, which is almost... It's almost hit 50,000 views now. Fantastic. So search Ro Jordan and get me to 50,000 views. Help us out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Ro. So... Um you're going to play us out uh, today uh, on the interview with uh, an acoustic version of Speak Up Ladies. Yes. Yeah? Can you kind of uh, introduce that for us and then take it away and look to see you again on the show. And, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, keep sending us through um, samples of your work and we'd love to keep them uh, uh, on our catalogue to play on the show. Yeah, for sure. I'd love that. OK, this is my track, Speak Up Ladies, the acoustic version. Up and around I've done a little bit of this and that I've seen a lot back in my day, I wouldn't take it back And now I see this from a different dimension So feeling across the board, we could raise a bit of tension, yeah Equally I like to stand up, boy Simplify the pay, you call this luck, boy Well go figure, you say raise a bar I say raise the figure, ask the question for say who put the trigger Reality check me, no what will be Will be, cause I know that Rise in time Reality Check me No what will be Will be Cause I know that Rise in time Yeah I don't think no What life was like for you And you The trophies pick up Ladies cause I don't think no Why we treated like a presidential policy? You're not protected like the men itself. What's wrong with me? Conversation flowing like it's set on automatic. When all is said and done, you can't undo this damage. Whoa, what definition of this rhythm? Yeah, this noise now. It falls reverse, yeah, I bet to see you bow down. Go figure, you say raise the bar. I say raise the figure. Ask the question for say who put the trigger? Reality, change me. No, what will be? Will be, cause I know that will rise in time. I'm a yeah. reality check me. No, I what will be, will be, cause I know that will rise in time. Yeah, I don't think I what life was like for you and you. The truth is, speak up, ladies, cause I don't think I know what life was like for you. A trophy speak up You ask without my decisions Despite how I'm feeling I'm in with my feelings Despite how you feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. I speak up now I speak up now uh, What you doing down there for a life? What you doing down there? Speak up now I speak up now oh, Come on, oh, come on, yeah Cause I don't That was Ro Jordan with an acoustic version of her new single, Speak Up Ladies. Final guest coming up very shortly, that is Harry Giorgio. Very much looking forward to speaking to them as well.
Sleep making me promises you can't keep shaking me right out of my dream crazy moon.
sleep making me promises you can keep shaking me right out of my dream craze oh moon waking me 3 a.m i can't sleep making me promises you can keep shaking me That's uh, KGB local band and uh, The Moon. We are live, local and loud, and our final guests have arrived in the studio and uh, we're going to be talking to Harry Giorgio. Going to kick things off, first of all, with uh, a track from Harry called Realness. So I wish it's just another Friday night Yet another nice look what to do Lost up in my mind trying to navigate through This is no rain, no rain, no rain Where's the realness gone? It's not my fault, I'm not willing to lose Ain't got a lot of time, but I got a lot to prove Give me my time, my time, my time That's realness from our final studio guest today. That's Harry George. Hey, Harry, welcome to the show. How's it going, man? Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming. And uh, Harry, uh, we've also got Matt with us, who's uh, a part of your band um, and he's the guitarist. Yeah. Uh, how did it all start, Harry? Kind of tell us, you know, where it started, where you are now, and kind of what happened in the middle. Okay, I'll try to condense this one down. <laughs> um, yeah, so I started doing music like as a little kid. I was like. Um, like emceeing and stuff like that over Garage and Grime and doing stuff in the local youth centres and stuff. And um, I ended up just wanting to do that, so did it at college, did music tech at uni and stuff, like moved from Stoke, where I'm originally from, to Leicester to go to DMU. Um, and, yeah, did, did my degree and stuff. And then around that, I was also, like, gigging and stuff like that around the same time. And then uh, when I left uni, um, I started work at HQ Recording Studio. Yeah. Um, which is where I like produce for other artists as well. So uh, I'm still in Leicester now, um, and yeah, basically just been performing. And now I kind of perform with a band, basically doing kind of a sound that I think because I've been doing it since I was a kid. I've just kind of gone through a lot of phases and stuff um, with like the rap um, and with 
all my other influences. So I'm just at a point where I've kind of got got a new sound that kind of um, has come about just by taking the best bits of all the phases I've gone through and just yeah, man. So how are you, uh, who are your uh, your band members? So there's Matt Burry, who's here right now. Hello. Uh, Richard, the guitarist, and Michal, the bassist. Uh, so we keep it pretty stripped back. Um, yeah, man, and that's us. Fantastic. Harry, you're going to play your first uh, live track for us, which is called Badness. Can yeah. you uh, um, tell us about it, introduce it, and take it away? Yeah, so uh, this one's called Badness. It's a new song, um, part of a collection of tracks I'm working on at the moment. And yeah, man, let's get into it. Listen, originality is so hard to come by these days, gotta get high these days, spirituality is so hard just to find these days, gotta get high some way, oh no, then we hit them with the badness, bass and get them hairline fractures, so when we come in with the new style, you know that it's a madness. I hope you're ready now We're coming with the badness I hope you're ready now, now Hit them with the badness I hope you're ready now We're coming with the badness Oh Lord, yeah, yeah Hit them with the badness Listen Let this world be my oyster I was sent here to destroy you Say goodbye to the blueprint that you had All laid out for your paranoia You know damn well your music sounds like torture But you feed it to the public like a chef completing orders I'm still dipping around as I'm flipping and dipping the sound If you take a look in my eyes then you know I ain't messing around Nah, nah We hit them with the bad news Let's go, yo Hit them with the bad news I hope you're ready now We coming with the bad news I hope you're ready now, now Hit them with the bad news I hope you're ready now We coming with the bad news Oh Lord, yeah, yeah Hit them with the badness Thank you very much. That is Harry Giorgio. Harry, how did that uh, track come about, Badness? Well, um, since I've like had a band to work with, we've just been like jamming out a lot of songs. So we've got like a lot of new songs that are um, that, w- that are kind of in demo form and stuff. And this this one, it's not too um, it's not too serious. It's just kind of poking fun at the industry and just talking about kind of uh, coming with a new sound, basically. Harry, um, you talked about. Uh, the fact you produce stuff for other people. Yeah. How does that work? Does that kind of... Uh, does the light go off in terms of your own stuff and then come on for other people's stuff? Or is there a bit of crossover? I'd say definitely, because... Um, d- when when I produce, I can kind of get out my own... I can, I can uh, try things I wouldn't usually do with my own music. So yeah. um, I, f- I feel like the two things have to coexist, if that makes sense. So the, I, I like loads of different kinds of music, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't put my name to loads of different kind of music because it would confuse people. Yeah. So when I produce for other people, I get the chance to get in their head and um, it's about just creating the right song for them kind of thing. So, well, What sort of genres of music do you produce for other people? Is it similar to your own or do you sort of go off the range a bit? 
Um, I wouldn't say it is similar to my own, to be honest. Like, it's a lot of rap stuff. Yeah. Um, dance stuff, grime, acoustic stuff. So who's some of the artists that you produce for? Um, well, the, one of the main artists I do produce for is actually my cousin, Charlie Giorgio. Right. Um, he has kind of like this rock trap kind of sound, and uh, we work very closely. Um, and he's he's like one of the main people I kind of focus on at the moment with with my production side. And how helpful was the the university stuff? You know, to where you are now, was it? Uh, did it kind of sort of take you to a different place, or did it just you know put the, the sort of finishing touches on? Yeah, with university, it was more. It was more actually moving from home to another city and uh, meeting loads of different people because uni is like a melting pot. You meet loads of different people who you otherwise wouldn't meet. You're all from different backgrounds, all from different cities. And I think that was the game changer for me, you know, just like meeting, like me and Matt met through, through going to uni and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was invaluable, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Matt, for yourself, obviously you're a band member and the band connection with Harry's come about recently. Uh, how did that kind of work for you? You know, is it uh, music you've always played or have you kind of moved into a different place to the stuff you used to perform before? Well, um, was it, I actually play in another band, uh, Gallows High, so, yeah. which is predominantly rock and metal. Um, but then when I moved into Harry, uh, well, moved in with Harry, we started uh, just jam. Well, I started jamming on his songs. So he would always ask me to, like, oh, could you do a bit of guitar for here? And I started to grow into that music a lot more. And then I think, like, we've mashed our like elements together so like he's bringing the reggae vibe i'm bringing the rock vibe and we're kind of gelling it all together to create a new sound great well, we're going to hear a, a song called release me which uh, i think is uh, um, a new release and then we'll perhaps talk a little bit about it yeah no problem Yeah, that was my cover of Ingelbert Humperdinck, Release Me. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty mad. So I just... BBC Leicester basically just got in touch with me and said they wanted me to be part of this uh, series called Under the Covers, where uh, they get bands who are about now to cover, like, iconic Leicester bands. So uh, I thought they were going to, like, give me Kasabian to cover or something like that. And then they rang me live on the radio and then played Ingelbert Humperdinck, released me down the phone and said, that's what I'd be covering. <laughs> and I just, I laughed it off, I'm not going to lie. And then um, 
we ended up just, uh, we just took the words and kind of just created our, me and Matt just jammed it out one night. And literally it took about two nights. We just yeah, uh, cool. booked out the studio. I did the beat, Matt jammed on the guitar, laid all the vocals that night. Then uh, the next day it was mixed. And Fantastic, yeah. yeah. So when I they like... said when they said release me, you sort of said, well, when they said there's the song and you said release me, and they said yeah, and you said no, no, release me from the contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like the way how you've really made it your own though. You've not tried Thank to you. imitate him at all. You've, I mean that's obviously you and his lyrics yeah. and that's. I just as I say I don't know if it would have worked trying to do uh, anything close to the cover because no. it's even in a different time signature. Yeah. So we had to look at the way that the the bars and everything and kind of just changed the way we did it a bit. But uh, honestly, it was a lot of fun and it's, I, I'm kind of up for doing mm. some more stuff like that now, to be fair. Might be interesting to see what uh, Engelbert Humbert thinks, yeah, thinks, thinks of it, that. perhaps. Why don't you send it to him? Well, funny you say that. He actually contacted a couple of us who worked Fantastic, on it. Yeah. And, um, right. They asked for the email um, to, you know, well, we asked for the email to send it to them and we haven't heard anything about it yet. <laughs> but, He's got a, I think he's got a pub in Leicester, uh, in Leicestershire, and he does come to Leicester occasionally. Uh, does he's, he? he's probably out in uh, LA or something. You know? He is, yeah. yeah. I follow him on Instagram, so yeah. he's, he's doing quite a few But, but he still does there, retain yeah. a love and a connection with Leicester, so yeah. it'd be cool if he, if he did come Drop back and you guys he dropped, he invited you down the pub for a pint and a Says hello, you know, yeah. jam session or we, something. We want him in the music video. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make this happen. <laughs> so, so, so tell us about the BBC introducing thing. Uh, in terms of what? In terms how did that of, come um, about and how was it for you, you know, the performance? And gigs in the Garden. Oh, the Gigs Sorry, yes. in the Garden. Yeah, Gigs in the Garden. Because uh, I've been doing, BBC Introducing have been supporting me for a long time through, like, uh, a load of the phases I've gone yeah. through. But, um, yeah, in the last, as I say, in the last year, when I think I've really found myself and got the band being fully back on the vocals, um, I, I like, Dean Jackson's always supported and stuff. And then um, I think... How like it was just I sent him a video of my band and stuff like that, yeah. And then he liked it, and we we were just basically picked from. Uh, he saw one of the live stuff, saw we were doing that. I just put my song out, uh, realness as well, with a video, and um, yeah, they just they just got us on the bill basically. Fantastic! And the actual performance, how was that? I loved it. Honestly, it was like yeah. so cool. It's quality. Like I've yeah. never been on a stage. Where it's it, the sound quality. It was so good, wasn't amazing. it? Amazing. Yeah. Like I could walk from one side of the stage to the other. Yeah. And still, it, the clarity was yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing you get at a top venue like the Mumford Hall. You get mm. the top of everything, you know, mm. the sound, the, the, the lighting, and so on. I had a dressing room with my name on as well. Mum, <laughs> I, <was Wow>. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I made it. But <laughs> and they, they had a real <laughs> range of artists because obviously they had the, the local artists day, the BBC. But then on some of the others, they, you know, they had uh, people like Nina Nesbitt and Jax Jones yeah. and so on. Mm. Um, Pete Tong, yeah, so yeah, they kind of made it all round sort of entertainment for everybody, really. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So, what uh, I mean, in terms of the local music scene, Harry, where can keep people come and see you? And you know, what sort of festivals do you do? Uh, well, it's funny you say that. So, off the back of that gig, we've just got another BBC introducing gig, right? We're actually playing the uh, official Peaky Blinders festival, the BBC introducing stage fantastic. on the 14th. So uh, main focus is on that at the moment. Oh. So we're we're just buzzing for that. Whereabouts is that? That's so in that a... is St Andrews um, Stadium, Digbeth. Ah oh, right, so okay, not blue... too far away. I then. think it's the Blue Stadium. Yeah, right. Birmingham. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh great! So onwards and upwards then from the. And that was it. Was literally like two days after the gig we played. Right. I got the email saying that they wanted us on the on the next one. So you're obviously impressed. Brilliant. <laughs> it, it went well, man. Like yeah. I can't lie. Definitely. Mm. And uh, in terms of other stuff you got coming up, you know, um, anything um, you want to share with us? Um, to be honest, music wise or gig wise? Yeah, music wise, like, so the cover we just played, yeah. that was literally, we just made that quickly for the sake of this show. But um, it's just been received so well. Like, when I went on Twitter, like, the next day, there was just loads of people uh, in me and stuff saying they like the, the cover and stuff. And uh, I'm actually going to release it as a single. Um, so I'm going to put "Release Me Out" as my next single, Great. Wow. and uh, do a video and stuff like that. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get pushing that one. And shout out to Engelbert Humperdinck. Yeah, we want him in the video. <laughs> we need him in the video. Uh, Harry and Matt, fantastic. You know, thanks for coming on the show. No just problem. Just before we close it, uh, once again, just tell us where the listeners can sort of access your work and your music and so on on social media. Yeah, so on social media, everything is at Harry Giorgio. It's a uh, Harry with an I. 
And yeah, man, that's me. And Giorgio with an E. Giorgio with an E. O R. And the live band is the Well Behaved Young Men. So when we play live, it's Harry Giorgio and the Well Behaved Young Men. But um, I upload all the stuff on my socials. So we'll yeah. have to get a page for us. Then. Maybe we do right now. It's a hashtag. We need that app. But yeah. Great, Harry. It's great that you've got so much going on and uh, things are going, you know, in an upward direction. So Thank fantastic. you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, you're going to play us out with a track called Dreaming. If you can maybe introduce it for us and then let us hear it. No worries. So this this is another one um, of these new songs that we've been jamming out. It's called Dreaming. And yeah, man. <laughs> Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming. Yo, turn your back, walk away, come back another day, dust yourself off. Good things come to those who eat. Distracted, led astray, 21st century man with a plan, and I'm just trying to find my way. But every step I take is pulling me down. Cause I've been spending all day with my head in the clouds. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming with my head stuck in the clouds. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming till reality takes me down. Walking by a little high, feeling like, is this life? I would like to take a flight, pack my bags out of sight. Life is short, don't think twice, take a shot. Roll the dice, cut the cake, take a slice. Trust me, boy, I'ma get mine, but every step I take, it's pulling me down. Cause I've been spending all day with my head in the clouds. Every step I take, it's pulling me down. I don't really know how, but I'll figure it out. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming with my head stuck in the clouds. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming till reality takes me down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming now? Guess I'm dreaming. Thank you. Fantastic. That's our final guest here on Live Local and Loud, Harry Giorgio. Just like to say big thanks as always to Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jazz. It's been a pleasure as always. And I'd just like to point out that uh, reviews of the gigs in the gardens is in Music in Leicester and a review of next week's Uprising will be in the online Music in Leicester magazine. But so that concludes uh, this week's edition of uh, Live Local and Loud. Jazz Minas.